my goodness. Today's a big one. It's a long one. I am going to be ranking all of the eyeshadow palettes that I tried in the year 2021. This video is a huge deal for me because eyeshadows are basically what I love to cover on my YouTube channel. And every single month I have a series where I rank all of the eyeshadow palettes I've tried for that month. And it's come down to this. I technically tried more than 110 eyeshadows, but I grouped a few together that kind of looked the same and there's some that I decluttered, some that I'm sure I just simply forgot about, but we still have 110 palettes to talk about, so you are not short for palette dog, guys. So if I forgot any, I'm sorry. It's hard to keep track. I feel as though these choices are very fluid. 110 is a huge number, so I could flip some of these. It could I could feel different on a different day, but I'm not going to think too hard about these because it was already stressful enough to have to place them. <laughs> so they landed where they landed. I also do have more in-depth videos of my top favorite palettes and the worst palettes of this year. If you want a little bit more detail because we're going to try and shoot through these palettes as quickly as possible. So we're going to get started with 110 and fun fact last year I tried 110 eyeshadow palettes. Let's get started with 110. I have a post-it note so that I don't lose track of my count. So the absolute worst most horrid palette that I tried this year was definitely the Tom Ford Naked Pink. All of these eyeshadows give me nothing. They don't really show up. Now if you want more in-depth swatches of these palettes. I'm not going to show them here. I'm not going to show looks. Oh my gosh, that would just kill me with the amount of work that it takes. But if you go through every month of my ranking series, you'll get swatches and looks that I've done with all these palettes. And I have a lot of reviews on these palettes, so they will be available if you are curious about the palette. Just type it in Morgan Turner in the palette name and you'll probably find it. But yeah, this is the absolute worst. Gives me nothing. Definitely check out my worst palette review if you want more thoughts on that. We're going to shoot through especially the worst ones because I've already done a whole video. So 109, we have the Melt Cosmetics Mary Jane palette. I actually really love the color story, so I probably use this a lot more times than I probably should have. But when I was laying out the rankings of the worst palettes, I really had to think about what kind of ruins my makeup. Up, what is not a pleasant experience and this is so glittery and so chunky as beautiful as it is it is a hot mess and messes up my makeup so yeah no can't can't accept that. 108, we have the Fenty Beauty Bomb Posse Mega Mix and Match eyeshadow palette. This is the most boring palette ever. When I first saw the color story on this, I was actually quite into it, but come to find out that uh, the shimmers are so weak. And I'm not saying you can't get a pretty look with this. You absolutely can, but the colors are so basic, so easily doable, and so many of the other palettes that I have. And for the price point and my expectations for Fenty, this just really really let me down the shimmers in here are extremely lackluster the mattes are pretty good but the shimmers uh -uh. the next palette that I have is from Urban Decay this is the Naked Cyber palette this is a little bit chunky the shadows lack pigmentation I think the color choices were weird here especially when it comes to the mattes the mattes honestly I feel like make it hard to really create looks they're all just really warm orangey shades I think for this to be a palette that I liked a lot more they would need to add more like pastel shades and more cooler tone like purples and greens to really work with the fun shimmers here but it was just a huge miss overall for me you can get a pretty look with it but it's hard to create a look with this palette if you're going to use more than three shades it starts to get messy and chunky and falls all over your face and I just don't like the colors in there so keep in mind with these rankings that a lot of it is just personal preference and expectation so just based on my knowledge of the brands or what color stories I tend to like. It's very, very personal. <laughs> 107 here, we have the Viseart Paris Love Letter Palette. I really wanted to love this because Viseart is amongst my favorite brands, but there's just so many inconsistencies, and oh my gosh. So every time I open this, this shade breaks even more. I don't know if you can see the huge mess because this is shattering, and I haven't really done anything with it. It's been sitting in the drawer. So it's a huge mess, and the prettiest shimmers in here are a little bit lackluster. They're kind of dusty. They follow all over your face, 
You can absolutely get a pretty look with this palette. The mattes are really great for the most part, but it's very, very inconsistent and not what I expect from Busy Art. 105, we have the Mirage palette from Dior. This is from their summer collection, and it's pretty, and the quality on this is okay. It's nothing to write home about, but it does leave a soft, luxurious look on the eye as far as the formulation, but all five of these shades literally look the same on the eyelid. There is no variation in this palette at all, which is really, really stupid. So this is a lot of money. There's no reason for all five shades to look the same, right? <laughs> 104, we have the Cruise Look Palette. I just think that this is like one of the ugliest color stories and it doesn't make any sense to me. The quality on this is okay. It's not as good as their permanent line formula, but it's better than most of their limited edition lines. But I hate, hate, hate this color story. 103 is the Gucci Beauty Eyeshadow Palette. This was a absolutely ridiculous price. It's not a good palette. Do I regret it though? No, I really love the packaging, but look how small these pans are. And I actually have a difficult time using this palette. If you use just a few of the shades, it's fine. But I find that if you do a look that requires more than four shades, it gets really difficult to blend. The shadows just don't apply with ease. And there's a lot of inconsistencies in the shimmers. Some shimmers suck, some are really good. But for the most part, this price is not just justified at all like this is like a $20 palette in my opinion if you take away the packaging but yeah for as expensive as it was it should not be so difficult to use 102 is another Dior palette Dior had a bad year they had some hits but they also had some misses this is the early bird palette well I do love the color story on this again it's unacceptable in the price that you pay because this shade does not show up at all this shade is difficult to work with I would say like these shades right here are fine but it's not Dior's best formula to begin with, even with the best shades. So there's just way too many inconsistencies. And I find this color story kind of weird and hard to create looks with. So that's why this is here. 102, I have another Tom Ford palette. This is Rose Prisme. And you know what? Kind of looking back, this is fine. This is not a bad formula. It's just an extremely underwhelming palette, an extremely underwhelming look that you get from this. All of the shades kind of lean in the same tone. And it's just not a look that I love with this palette. So I have never reached for it. All right, let's get over to number 100. And by the way, if I do mess up the numbers, it will be on the screen. Uh, but this is from Chanel. This is the Tender Eyeshadow Palette. I just found this extremely, extremely boring. A couple of the shades don't show up at all. And again, for Chanel, it just shouldn't work that way. I have some drugstore shadows later that I'm going to talk about that are way better than the Chanel formula. So partially because I think the color story is really boring and dupable, but mostly because the eyeshadow formula is nothing to write home about and a couple of the shades just don't act right. All right, uh, number 99 is the Natasha Denona Zendo palette. Now, in all actuality, the quality in here is not bad at all, but just for me and my expectations with Natasha Denona, this is not what I want from Natasha Denona. The shimmers are quite lackluster, which I know might be a selling point to some, but for me and my own personal rankings, I'm just not a fan of the shimmers in here, and I hate the color story in here as well. I find it very hard to create a look with. A lot of muddiness happens between these shadows and it just it's not a good time for me I don't enjoy this palette let's move on to a number 98 this is a another Tom Ford palette this is the disco dust eyeshadow palette I got this on a recommendation from a lot of you guys and unfortunately this one just didn't wow me I didn't necessarily like the look I don't think the quality in here is bad but I felt like the looks that I did were kind of patchy I think it's a difficult mixtures of colors to deal with. Just these two shades I find are so light and then you have this really deep shade and they didn't blend into one another very seamlessly. So it's fine, but I really just don't like the look that I get from that. Number 97, we have the Verdandi palette from Odin's Eye. This is simply a case of I just really don't like the color story. I think it's a weird mix of colors. I think it's hard to create a look with and I also don't think it's Odin's Eye's best formula. It's still a 
good formula just because Odin's Eye is amazing, but this is definitely my least favorite palette from them. 96 is from NARS. This is the Taj Mahal palette. And at first I thought I really liked this, especially because of this glitter shade right here. But in all actuality, after playing with more NARS palettes, NARS has a much better formula than this. So I'm not sure what was going on with this. I feel like the shade is a little bit patchy. It definitely lacks pigmentation. You can totally get a beautiful look with this. I absolutely did, especially if you incorporate this. But it's just a very blah palette for me. And I know that NARS does have a lot better. 95, I'm combining these two quads. These are from Charlotte Tilbury. These are a better version and more affordable of the Chanel Tender palette that I just mentioned. These I almost decluttered. I'm holding on to these because I feel like these could potentially dupe a few Charlotte Tilbury shades. I just haven't tested them out yet. I'm just not a fan of drugstore eyeshadows in general for the most part. I do think there's some formulas that stand out. This one to me doesn't stand out. I feel like I can totally tell that it's drugstore. I don't know there's a specific texture that a lot of drugstore palettes have that is a little bit chalky and I feel like these also feel like the, that. You can get a pretty look with them but I just I'm not that impressed with them. 94 is the eyeshadow palette that I'm wearing today and this is a new one. I haven't talked about it with you guys yet but I recently finally got to trying the Wayne Goss Tourmaline palette and I'm really not that moved with it honestly. I find the darker shades to be a little bit patchy. This palette I find to be a little bit harder to work with. I wore this on Christmas and then I also wore it today and the look is really pretty. You can get very pretty sultry look but I'm just not impressed with the quality of this. I don't find it very easy to work with. I find it a bit patchy and I've just come to conclusions that I'm not the biggest fan of Wayne Goss's eyeshadow palettes in general. He has a couple that I really like but this this one, I just wasn't doing it for me. Quality didn't stand out, so yeah, I didn't really like that one that much. 93, I have another Tom Ford palette, and in all actuality, Tom Ford has some really amazing formulas, but I've tried a lot of inconsistent ones from them this year, and it's just because their price tag is so high, so keep that in mind. Like, this formulas aren't bad. They just aren't worth the price point. The next one is Insolent Rose. I thought I was gonna like this one a lot more than I did. It's fine. It's pretty, but I didn't like the way that this shade blended, and it's just not as good as it should be. I don't find the colors to mesh together well, and that might just be stemming from the fact that these aren't the wet-dry formula that Tom Ford does so well. But you can get a pretty look with this, but it is quite a basic color story in there. Nothing is really crazy that stands out about it that justifies the price. Honestly though, I do think I ranked this a little bit too low now that I'm looking at my table. This isn't that bad, but I really was disappointed by it. At 92, I have an eyeshadow palette from Charlotte Tilbury. This came out in January of 2021, so it's quite old. This is the Flawless Eye Filter Luxury Palette in the shade Diva Light. This is fine, but it's just not as good as Charlotte Tilbury's Best Formula. This was a new formulation for her at the time, and I'm just not a fan. It's kind of similar to the Tom Ford Wet Dry Formula, but not as well done, if you ask me. It's pretty, it's fine, but the color story fell under the radar, and so did the formula for me. 91 is from Nabla. This is the Cutie Palette, and I don't know. I thought that this palette was very, very very pretty but it wasn't as good quality as I thought it was going to be. It was just a little bit of a disappointment for me. It's still good. You can get very pretty looks with it but I wasn't impressed with the mattes here. I think that's what disappointed me the most. The shimmers are really beautiful but I found the mattes a little bit harder to work with. 90 we have from Odin's Eye. This is the Squid Palette and I thought I was going to love it because it has some gorgeous pastel shades and I mean I do really like it but it's not their best quality again and you can't really grab in here to create a whole look. This is definitely just a topper palette, but a few of the shades you do have to dig a little bit more than I would like, so it's not great quality. It's good enough, and the colors are really, really beautiful, but I know Odin's Eye can do better. I still really like it, though, so. Now we're getting into palettes that, like, I do like. They just had to land somewhere. Next, we have 89. This is from Tarte. This is the Tarte Le Juicy palette, and I think this did really well, but I think I was one of the few people that was actually kind of not in love with this palette. I found the mattes hard to work with. The formula in general just didn't impress me. The shimmers were like, okay. I love the color story here. I think it's such a gorgeous bridal palette and I actually would consider putting this in my bridal kit if I didn't have so many other great options. The formula is just like average to me. There's nothing special about it. I find a few of the shades quite redundant and they look the same on the eye, but it's okay. But I, I don't love this formula. I don't really love Tarte's formula in general and that one solidified that. 88 is another 
another Tom Ford palette. This is Sue Le Sable, and I went through a Tom Ford phase this year where I bought a lot of their older palettes, and now I realize the, why these are ones that aren't talked about so often. So this is Sue's Le Sable, and I actually quite like the quality on this. It is his normal powder formula, but I think it's beautiful. It's just the shades in here are really lackluster. This is truly just a very, very boring color story. I think if you're very, very fair and you like everyday wearable makeup, I actually do recommend this one for you, but it's not a color story that I'm inclined to reach for at all. 87 is Coquette from Tom Ford. This is one for me that's just kind of unmemorable. It's a pretty more sultry look, kind of similar to the eye look that I'm wearing today is what you can get with this palette, but it fell under the radar for me. Honestly, I completely forgot about it. It's fine. I really don't like this shade right here, so that automatically takes away 25% of the palette, so not a Tom Ford palette that I would recommend. I either love them or I hate them. <laughs> 86 is a newer palette. This is from Rem Beauty. This is the eyeshadow palette in the shade Midnight Snack. So I might be a little bit biased with this one, but I just am not enthused with this line really in general. The quality on this palette is fine. I actually don't have anything bad to say about it. It's just not my favorite. It's not my favorite color story. I really don't like the packaging. It's not a makeup product or a makeup line that excites me. So this is where it fell. I mean, if I wasn't a makeup reviewer, I definitely would not feel the need to have this one in my collection. 85 is is another Tom Ford one. This is metallic denim. I think I probably ranked this a little bit lower than it needed to be because I actually quite like this one. It's just a bit messy for me. I actually kind of like this one. I don't know what I was thinking when I was ranking it. Imagine this ranked higher. It's like probably deserves to be amongst the middle. So I like this one, but we're just going to leave it here. So there was an uh-oh. <laughs> 84 is from ColourPop. This actually came out with two other palettes and I decluttered them. This collection as a whole, I did like the palettes and the quality. This is from their Valentine's collection. This specific one that I kept is Melt For You. The others I decided to give away just because they weren't color stories that I would use. And that's kind of why this and the others would rank right here in this spot, just because they aren't colors that I personally wear too often. I like pink eyeshadows, but the ones in this collection were very, very pink. I kept this for reference for this video, but yeah, decent ColourPop quality, just not my favorite. 83 is from Odin's Eye. This is the Saga of Freya palette, chapter one. So there were multiple palettes from this collection. This is just a color story that didn't speak to me. I didn't really like this color story. I found the shades to be quite light, honestly, and it just wasn't my favorite. I don't, I don't feel the need to reach for this color story very often. 82 is from Huda Beauty. This is the Chocolate Brown Obsessions palette. I love the color stories in this launch, but the quality was a little subpar in my opinion, especially for Huda Beauty. Now I know her Obsessions palettes normally aren't as good quality, but the mattes were fine in this, but the shimmers were a little bit chunky and some were lackluster. It's very inconsistent across the board with this collection, which is why the next one that I have is the Caramel Brown Obsessions from this palette. This one is not my color story at all to begin with. It definitely is way too warm. Like this shade, you're not gonna get much color with. This shade was a waste in the palette. This collection in general was just really inconsistent across the board, so that's why we're at where we're at. <laughs> Let's move on to number 80, which is the Too Faced Cinnamon Swirl Palette. Now we're definitely getting into the good palettes because I definitely tried a lot more good palettes than I did bad palettes, but this is the, cin oh, this is the Cinnamon Swirl Palette that came out for the holiday season. I actually do quite like this palette. I think the color stories are great, but I do find a few of the shades difficult to work with to where I couldn't justify putting it in a higher place. Like, I do think this shade is a little bit messy, this shade is a little bit lackluster, and I did struggle. And struggle is a strong word, but I did have to put a little extra work into a few of the matte shades and a few of the shimmer shades to get them to rest pretty on the eye. Uh, but I do love the color story of this. I think the price is fair, especially if you can get it on sale. So I like that palette. It's just not the best. I think I might have gotten some of the counts mixed up, so editing me will figure that out. Editing Morgan is very, very sad because I miscounted. So we are just going to skip a number. We're on a different number now. I don't know how to count but we all knew that already. Uh, but I just recounted, we're at 77 right now. These are the one size eyeshadow quads. These came out for the holiday season. So the first one that we have here is Golden Cocoa, and then the next one that we have is Copper Cider. These look a lot prettier than they were to apply, so I think you get gorgeous, really creamy, reflective, very pigmented looks when it comes to these palettes. 
but the mattes are kind of really really hard to blend making it take a lot longer to create a look so that's why they're ranked where they're ranked simply because of the quality and how not blendable the mattes are 76 is from huda beauty the last one from that brown obsessions collection this is the toffee palette again this formula was just a bust there's a few shades that are a little lackluster and just not up to par with what i know huda beauty can launch the mattes were okay some didn't blend that well didn't really like this one liked the color story but not the quality 75 is a collection of quads that i got from maven beauty i think we're just going to put them all together here they have i love the way that they're arranged there's a bold blend which is more warm shades there's a medium blend which has more uh, mid-tone shades a deep one which is the deep shades i think these make a lot of sense and i think that they're actually very very nice quality and i love the packaging and i love the concepts i just don't reach for this brand really often so I haven't gotten a lot of use from these I can say that I don't really like the shimmer formula but the matte formula is really nice love the concept of these but I just didn't grab for them they were just boring to me 74 is gonna shock you this is from Pat McGrath this is the divine rose luxe quad in eternal Eden just for me mostly this is plain old boring and at the time that this launched we just already had so many palettes like these the quality on this is absolutely fine it's just so extremely underwhelming especially what we have from Pat McGrath, we have these shades a thousand times over again, so it's more so disappointing in that regard for the color story, but the quality is fine. 73, we have the Huda Beauty Wild Chameleon Obsessions palette, so this is like the Brown Obsessions, but it's from a new line, and this line is a lot better than the Brown Obsessions, if you ask me. Again, not perfect. There are a little bit of inconsistencies, but this palette is really just warm. You can get really pretty looks from it, but it's just not my favorite, but I actually do like it. 72 is from ZC and it's a collaboration with the British Museum. First of all, the packaging definitely bumps it up here and the quality here is very, very good as well. It's not amazing, but I think it's nice. Uh, it's just not a color story that I reach for very often, but I actually am impressed with the shimmer shades in here. I think they're really reflective and you can get some beautiful looks. It's just not a color story that I reach for very often, but I do like it very much. 71 is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Flawless Eye Filter Luxury Palette in Eyes of a Star. This is kind of just a very boring palette if you ask me. Again, it's similar to that Tom Ford Wet Dry formula. It's very pretty, very wearable, but it's just not something that I've got for just because of how boring it is and it's just a medium quality kind of formula from Charlotte Tilbury in my opinion. 70 is the Urban Decay Naked Wild West palette. This is actually one of the best naked palettes that they've come out with in a while if you ask me. I don't have anything to complain about as far as the quality. It's just a boring palette to me and this is where we're getting with most of the palettes now. It's like they're actually pretty good. I just don't reach for them a lot. This color story is not exciting for me at all so that is why this is ranking where it's ranking but it's a it's a fine and dandy palette. 69 is from ColourPop. This is the Cherry Crush palette and I was actually playing pleasantly surprised by this palette. It's just very, very red. Not a color story that I reach for very often, but if you're in search of a palette that contains these shades, I think that this is very good if it's still available. And I actually was quite impressed with this. It's just very bold for my preferences. 68 is by Too Faced. This is the Teddy Bear palette. I actually really like this one, and I was even considering getting the spring palette that came out in this format because I did like this one so much. Uh, but it's boring. I've actually reached for it a lot now that I'm thinking about it, but I reached for it for the transition shades more so than the actual fun shades in here but I think this is a very well put together palette it's just not exciting but it's it's a good palette <laughs> 67 is from elf this is the new classics palette I was very surprised when I tried this at how much I like it it has really all of the great transitional shades that you would need I think it is a great beginners palette to anybody getting into makeup because it just contains so many useful shades elf quality is not the best but it's certainly not the worst so I did enjoy my time with this 66 is another one from ColourPop. This is the Off Melrose palette. For a while, I was super into this color story. I think it's very pretty, but honestly, over time, I've forgotten about it just because ColourPop has come out with so many color stories. It is so difficult to keep track of. So I think this one is really pretty. It has a nice duo chrome in here, but it did kind of fall to the back burner for me. 65 is one from Pat McGrath. Again, this is the Celestial Odyssey quad in Bronze Borealis. So this one 
really great quality, even better than the first Pat McGrath quad I just showed you. Uh, but again, very repetitive, still in those very pinky golden tones. So it's just the color story that left me disappointed, not necessarily the quality. In fact, the quality is really great. I just have these shades over and over again from Pat McGrath. 64. I can't believe I'm putting this here, but this is, this is the Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette in the light. I do have the dark, but it's actually my mom, so I haven't tried it yet, so I won't be ranking that. Love the eyeshadow palettes here, but I just, I can't get over that the blush in here already dried out. And I know that this is an eyeshadow palette ranking, but I really don't care. I can't believe the blush dried out, so this shot it a lot lower because honestly, the shades down here are stunning perfection really beautiful but I'm sending out warning signals to you now since this dried out which definitely makes the value of this go down to me 63 is from beauty by stony and unfortunately I believe this brand closed down this year but this was their remedy to eyeshadow palette that came out really beautiful it's a color story that's not completely cohesive but I do find the matte super pigmented and you can create some really beautiful neutral looks which is mostly what I used it for but you can of course course get some fun pops in here but I really did like the quality of this and I created some really beautiful looks with this so I'm really sad to see that the brand closed down but this was a solid eyeshadow palette. 62 is the ColourPop It's a Mood. This is a fairly new one for me so I won't say I'd like to use it a little bit more but I think it is a beautiful color story. It's good ColourPop quality but just to me ColourPop quality isn't the best so that's why this fell a little bit lower and I haven't really given this a strong chance yet so this is definitely in a tentative 60 but I have enjoyed what it, what I've used from it so far and I do like it. 61 is from Sephora Collection. This is the I Love palette. Very impressed with this. I find it to be really great value. It's very beautiful everyday kind of neutral colors. Of course they offer a lot more color stories but this one that I bought in the shade medium cool. Love these tones. I think the formula is really great. Great, great for the price for sure. 60 is the Elf and Jen Atkin collection. I was pleasantly surprised by this palette. This is the lighter palette and I found everything very easy to use. You could create a look with this so easily without thinking about it. I actually was very impressed with this palette overall. It's not the most amazing blendable creamy pigmented shadows I've ever used but it also is really great for the price and very user friendly so I actually enjoyed that a lot. It's also just a little bit more boring but I like it. <laughs> 59 is from Pat McGrath. This is the Celestial Odyssey Luxe Quad in Deep Space Divinity. This is one of the quads that came out for the holiday collection this year. I just am underwhelmed more so by the color story. I think the quality is just great but again I mean there's other shades that she has in her line that looks like this. You know, a gold shade, a champagne shade, and a reddish warm shade. We have that a thousand times over. And this shade, maybe not in the Pat McGrath line, but it's in a lot of other lines. So it's just lack of uniqueness with this quad, but it's fine. 58 is from Chanel. This is the Le Beige eyeshadow palette in Intense. I had the Tenderly one in the worst eyeshadow palette rankings, but I much prefer this color story and I do think the quality is really great. It is a bit on the boring side, but I really like how wearable it is and I like these tones a lot better. So, I mean, the quality is not a billion steps up from the first Chanel palette that I showed you, but the color story helped this one a lot. 57 is from Odin's eye. This is the Erd palette. This is stunning. I actually recently used this in a video. It's just not one that I reach for a ton. It's, I don't know. I mean, I really do like this, but in recent collections, Odin's eye has even upped their game more, so now it's not the number one best quality eyeshadow, but I really do like it. I just don't reach for it a ton. 56, we have a ColourPop palette. This is the ColourPop and Malibu Barbie palette. Oh, this one just makes me excited. Honestly, I love this for the packaging, and the color story is fine. It's a bit pink, but I've had a lot of fun with this palette. Honestly, I've enjoyed my time with it. I love the way that it makes you feel on the inside. Do I reach for it a ton? No, that's why it's ranking where it's ranking. I've tried 100 palettes this year. I can't use one palette every single day, but I like this one a lot. I'm very happy and I don't plan on decluttering it anytime soon. 55 is Huda Beauty Wild Python palette. So this one is a step up in terms of the color story. Again, same issues with those obsession palettes that I've been talking about, but the color story is just so fun and unique that this shoots it up in front of the others because I've had a lot of fun with this. I've created a lot of fun looks with this. 54 is from Odin's Eye. This is the Saga of Freya collection in the Freya Saga palette. So this one is an interesting one because it is double layered. So you get this warm 
warmer side, which honestly I'm not crazy about. It's just not in my color story. And then you get this side as well, which is a very interesting mix of colors. This side is more so what I would grab for just because I think the green is fun. I think that the neutrals and the bottom half down here you can have a lot of fun with. I, I don't think it's the most cohesive palette, which is why it's ranking where it's ranking, but the quality is unbeatable. But I just don't reach for it as often because the color story isn't as cohesive to me. 52 is from ColourPop. I really loved this one this season. This is the Rudolph the Rain Red Nose Reindeer palette. And I think it is such a fun Christmas palette. I actually really liked the color story in here. But it's not the most wildly unique palette. And again, it is the ColourPop formula, which is really good. But I test a lot of high-end luxury shadows and it just doesn't beat those but I actually really really love this one and I highly recommend it I know it's like ranking low but we're closing towards the middle here and this one is awesome I love this one 52 is from Sigma Beauty this is the dream palette and this is actually the first Sigma palette that I really really liked I had a lot of fun with this it's not a superior formula but it really is a nice formula and I love the looks that I created I think there's a lot of versatility within this palette it still is in my comfort zone of neutrals but you have some fun pops to play with. This is a really nice one. I like it. 51 is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Super Nudes Easy Eye Palette. I tried this for the first time this year. It is a very beautiful essential neutral eyeshadow palette. It's just very, very boring. I mean, I can't deny the quality of it. It's very easy to use. It's very user-friendly. I think it's really great for mature skin. I just don't reach for it because it's boring. <laughs> 50 is a newer one that I actually picked up during the most recent Sephora VIB sale. This is from Dior and this is the Backstage Eye Palette in Plum Neutrals. Pleasantly surprised by this. These don't tend to swatch very well but they look beautiful in the eyes. It's just a really great everyday leaning more purple palette. It gives a nice beautiful luxury glow to the eye. Very very easy to use. Nothing mind-blowing, but I really liked my time with this so far. 49 is another palette from Dior. This is the Romantic Voyage, and I think it is absolutely beautiful. I just know they've come out with palettes that I like more than this one, but this one was a really, really good one. Honestly, probably should have ranked it higher, but I'm disappointed that I don't think you can get your hands on it anymore, but it is a pretty purple palette. 48 is from Heen Dash. It is the Heen Dash eyeshadow palette. So this is what it looks like and the quality of these shadows really are nice but I'm gonna be honest I don't reach for this palette as often as I should it's just very very basic colors and I that's definitely what Heen Dash wanted for sure it just isn't one that screams out to me if that makes sense but it's great quality 47 is from Natasha Denona this is the mini xenon palette and I actually really do like this I think it's great quality but I did find a more affordable dupe from ColourPop that honestly swatches better than this one so I really like this one but I know there's a better alternative which is why I'm ranking it where it's at 46 I'm counting as one because they look the same and they were from the same collection so this is from the Dior holiday collection which is the house of dreams the atelier of dreams collection sorry but this is the house of dreams quint which is a little bit more neutral and then we have more of a golden neutral palette which is atelier dore both of these are beautiful but I will say they're not as good as the regular luxury permanent line from Dior. They're very, very good and very, very pretty. But I just know they're not the best formula that Dior has to offer. But honestly, I really do love these. I think they're fantastic. 45 is from Dior. This is the Nightbird palette. And I think the quality of the Dior palettes that I just mentioned are better. But the color story in this one is absolutely unbeatable. This shade right here isn't the greatest, but I'm so in love with these outer shades here that I had to rank this higher because I love it. I think the colors are so pretty. 44 is from Odin's Eye. This is the Norn's eyeshadow palette. This is one of the most unique palettes that I tried this year. I do not have another palette like this one in my collection. I think there's a few of the shades in here that are a bit, like just a little inconsistent, but 
the color story and the quality of the ones that are really good make up for this one. I highly recommend this one just because it's so different from anything I own. Next up from Juvia's Place in place number 43 is the Wahala 2 palette. So love the quality of this, love the color story of this, love that there's duochromes and different texture here, but I can't lie, I hardly ever use this because I'm actually very uncomfortable with this color story, which is great for me to have in my collection because it gets me out of my comfort zone for sure, but nothing bad to say about this palette, but it's definitely out of my comfort zone. 42 is from Kimchi Chic Beauty. This is the Virgin Mojito palette and great quality, fun color story, obsessed with the packaging of this brand. I don't reach for these colors quite as often, but this is a really awesome palette with some fabulous quality, so I highly recommend this one if you're into it. 41 is the BH Cosmetics Naughty Palette. Honestly, this one is a super duper good one. There's a ton of options here. The quality is really great. The value is absolutely incredible. But this one is super duper good. I really like this one. 40 is the Club Nebula Palette that Kaleidos did in collaboration with Angelica Nikas, who I love so, so much. And as per usual, Kaleidos does a fabulous job with their formulas. Such an innovative palette definitely screams Angie to me as well love the lid toppers it's just very blue for me you won't catch me wearing blue too too often especially off camera I will on camera but off camera it's just not colors that I reach for very often but superb palette that's for sure and definitely a great selection of colors 39 is the melt cosmetics amore e mariposas definitely the best palette that I've tried from melt this year and really really great quality on this one very very pigmented just not my kind of color story if that makes sense but I'm really impressed that Melt was able to come out with this because it really is such a good formula and I hope that they continue to create this formula but I, the color story is a bit intimidating to me I'm not gonna lie. 38 is another palette from Kaleidos. I forgot they launched two this year but this is the Flower Punk palette. I like this one. I just haven't reached for it a ton but I love that you get kind of fall tones here and then spring tones here. Again Kaleidos Kaleidos killed it with the packaging. I think the color story is really interesting as well. I didn't love these two shades if I remember correctly, but I'm going to be honest. I haven't thought about this palette recently, so that's why I put it on this end because I know I really like it and I know it's beautiful, but it wasn't memorable. So next from Odin's Eye, we have the Cat with Golden Carriage palette. Love this color story here. Doesn't this look absolutely incredible so I love this color story really unique fabulous fabulous quality one of my favorites in this collection really liked it 36 is a brand new one so I haven't given it the full try yet but this is from Tom Ford this is the lava luster quad and I really really love this one but I will say after swatching it next to a Pat McGrath special shade blitz astral shade these don't compare to the Pat McGrath the Pat McGrath makes this one look boring but on its own this is a really beautiful formula from Tom Ford really happy with this one it's definitely my favorite palette that Tom Ford launched this year 35 we have the Natasha Denona mini metropolis palette I don't have anything bad to say about this palette at all it's just a repeat of shades that were in the full-size metropolis palette so it wasn't as exciting to me but it is a really nice palette really great for the holidays moving on to 34 I have this palette from Natasha Denona this one is brand new so again I haven't given it the full thorough test out yet but this is the mini Biba palette and I do like it but it's not my favorite color story I find it to be a little bit boring I'm still testing out the mattes I think one of them kind of caught on my eye but I'm gonna have to continue playing with this one this one truly is just boring for me when it comes to Natasha Denona I wasn't super excited about it it's good quality it's very pretty on the eye but it just kind of falls flat I don't know. I still like it. It made it in the top third of this video, but it's not the greatest from Natasha. 33 is from Huda Beauty. This is the Wild Jaguar palette, and this is ranking so high simply because of this color story. I've actually grabbed for this quite a lot because I love the smoky coolness. Now, originally when I did rank these palettes when they were new, this one was not my favorite like it is today, but I just love the color story of this one so much. I love how dimensional the shimmers are, so I actually reached for this one quite 
quite a lot just for every day. 32 is from BH Cosmetics. This is the Lost in Los Angeles palette and this one is really fun. If you are looking for an affordable pastel palette, you have found the perfect one and honestly these pastel shades I find to be a lot better than a lot of higher end ones that I've tried as well. So this is a great one that I recommend. You can get some really pretty springtime looks with this and a lot of times for more affordable brands, this color story is definitely hard to get a good formula with but as always BH killed it. You know it's not a color story I reach for often but I am so impressed with the quality and the value here. Okay we're getting to the really good ones you guys. This one's getting competitive. Let's move to number 31. This is from Scott Barnes. This is the Glamazon palette and oh my goodness this is an equal toned lover's dream. Now I do have one caveat on the quality. I do find that the shades show up a little bit different on the eyes than they do in the pan. Like I find these green shades lose the green once you get them on the eyes but for the most part very easy to use palette. Very great array of colors. Very unique in my collection so love that one. 30 is from Natasha Denona. This is the mini love palette and I did not expect this to rank so high but I actually ended up using this one a ton this year. I really enjoy the quality of this. It's a pinky purple palette and I had a lot of fun with this one this year. 29 it's in my makeup kit. Didn't feel like dragging it out but I have it on a sticky note. This is the Wayne Goss Pearl palette and honestly I would not personally have ranked this that high but I actually ended up using this palette a ton on my brides this bridal season so I had to rank it definitely higher because I got so much use out of it. It's a very pretty bridal palette. I did feel like I needed to dig into other palettes a lot of times. I didn't just use the Wayne Goss palette by itself but it was a great base for the looks that I did. 28 is from Dior. This is the pink Sakura palette. This is definitely Definitely like the best Dior came out with this year. It's very very purple though so that's definitely why I love it so much but the quality is superb. This was limited edition which is really really unfortunate but it is such a gorgeous purple palette. It's a beautiful luxurious formula. Absolutely love it. 27 is from Viseart. This is their newest palette. So this one is fairly new to me. This is the Etoile palette. So it has a really pretty Parisian night sky. Listen, I love this palette. I've had a lot of fun with it, but it's very, very deep. So I don't foresee it as something that I'm going to reach for a ton. But I just think they did such a good job with this one. I love the color story. I love the quality. It's an amazing palette. It's just not my go-to color story, but I love it. So I messed up on my count, you guys. <laughs> I forgot to pull out my Patrick Ta Major Dimension eyeshadow palette. So it's not going to have an official number because that's going to mess up my ranking. But I did try 111 palettes this year. And so sneaking this in, this would technically be like number 27. This is the Patrick Ta Major Dimension eyeshadow palette. It's a really great solid neutral eyeshadow palette. I'm not as in love with it as everybody else I would say. But it's still a bomb palette. The quality is really nice. It has really great staple colors. So I definitely really do like this one, but it's not my favorite neutral palette of the year. 26 is from Artist Couture. This is the Supreme Bronze palette. I was late to pick this one up because I didn't need it, but man... Do I love it? I don't know. Do I like this one or the Patrick Ta one better? Actually looking down, put the Patrick Ta above this one. I like the Patrick Ta better, but this one is still super duper good. I love how there's these orange and warm shades that you can mix in to really warm up the look, but also you can get super neutral cool looks. I think it is a really great mixture of neutral shades, and I love how it's so different from its counterpart that Artist Couture has out. Like I didn't think they would look that, that different, but they really do. So I love how each palette stands out on its own as well. Number 25 is from Florisys. This is a palette that I tried this month and it is just so beautiful. The only flaw in this palette is that the size of the colors are so inconsistent and I would change where the colors were placed because I don't know like I want this shade to be bigger because it's so pretty I want this shade to be bigger there's reasoning why the colors are where they're at but I wish they were more even but that ruins the embossment but anyways this palette is absolutely stunning I don't believe the video I have using this is uploaded yet but just know this is bomb 24 as a mixture, I'm counting these all as one of the Viseart Pettit 4s that came out. I've talked about these a lot recently, but I love them. They aren't the most unique color source, which is why they aren't in my top 10 or anything, but they're super duper good and really great quality and super cute. So we have Garnet, which is my least favorite of the four, so I'm kind of doing a little mini ranking here. And then my third favorite is going to be Lapis, which is the more blue one, and I'm just putting it in third simply because it's very
Berry Blue. I wouldn't reach for it as often, but it is stunning. Second place, I'm gonna give it to Peridot, which is the greens, which I think a lot of you would really love. It does kind of simplify the green look. And then number one, I just love the tones in here. This is Bullion, and oh my goodness, Neutral Lovers, mm, mm. Okay, I love these, they're great quality. I don't think you need them, but you need them because they're really great. 23 is from ColourPop. This is the Limoncello palette. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is one of my favorite neutral palettes that came out this summer. Um, I just think it's very luxurious for ColourPop. This is my favorite collection that ColourPop came out with. I feel like the quality on this palette is like stepped up a little bit. I just love this. I used it a lot this summer. I love the orangey bright yellow tones as well. Very good for summer. Really great quality from ColourPop. I just, I don't know. I really liked the tones in that one. 22 is the Sydney Grace collaboration with Temtalia. Counting all of these as one because honestly they all kind of look the same but different. <laughs> so we have this one right here which is Quintessence. Stunning. Then we have Radiant Reflection, which is going to be the brightest of the three. And then we have On the Horizon, which is like more muted and mauve -y. I actually really like this one, but I love because you can't beat Sydney Grace quality to begin with. And I absolutely love the color stories that Temtalia chose. I, I wouldn't have chosen to do these in three palettes and the way that she organized them because they kind of look the same, but I can't get over the quality and still the colors that Temtalia individually chose were just beautiful. I love them so much. 21 is the Natasha Denona Circle Loco palette. Even I didn't appreciate this enough when it first came out, but I've actually had a lot of fun with this throughout the year. It's really great quality, especially for being such difficult colors to work with. I've actually been surprised at the looks that I've created myself, and I've been really in love with them. So I had a lot of fun with this palette. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but it's a bomb colorful palette if you're into colorful eyeshadows. 20 is the Danessa Myricks Light work volume 3 which unfortunately is no longer available but I do love that Danessa Myricks dug into the world of multi-chromes and put them in an accessible palette. I do think the palette is a bit expensive but I must say I really do love this palette. It's not one that you're going to create a whole look with. You definitely are going to have to dip into other palettes to create full full looks but the quality of these multi-chromes are really good. They're not as good as indie shadows but in the long run you're actually saving a lot of money because because of how expensive those types of shades are, but kudos to Danessa Myricks for this one. It is gorgeous. It's a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I think it's a great way to get a taste of multi-chromes and have them all in one place. 19, I have the Charlotte Tilbury Smoky Eyes Are Forever. I did have a hard time not putting this in my favorite eyeshadow palettes of 2021 video, but I just love the other instant eye palettes that have come out in previous years more than this one. So it just depends on what your taste in colors are. But at this point, I feel like I have all of these shades in my Charlotte Tilbury collection. So that's why it didn't hit the top top. But nonetheless, this is still an amazing palette and definitely one of my most anticipated and loved every single year. So it's still fantastic. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> Number 18 is the Pat McGrath Celestial Odyssey palette. Another one that I know you guys were shocked didn't make it into my top top. But you guys, I like this one, but I love the one from last year better. Even though you can get some beautiful shimmery looks in here and the quality is really great. I don't love the mattes that she chose for this one and honestly I'm not saying I've had a hard time creating looks but I haven't really been able to create super unique looks. There's something about the way that this palette is laid out or the colors that leaves me feeling a little uninspired which I know is crazy because this palette is absolutely amazing. The quality is spectacular but I have to think a little bit harder than I normally do to create a look when it comes to that palette. And I just think it has to do with the lack of mattes and the mattes that are in there are all like rosy. And I just, I want more than just rose mattes to really be able to play off the shimmers in that palette. Finally, okay, let's get into number 18. This is a palette from Busy Art. This is the Bijouette palette, and I mean, the packaging, oh, I love it so, so much. And okay, I don't reach for colors like these very often, but I just love this palette so much. I had so much fun with it. I'm really excited that Viseart came out with a palette like this. So I had to put it here just because I was so excited that Viseart came out with a color story like this. Okay, guys, so from here on out, these palettes were in my top eyeshadow palettes of 2021 video, and the rankings of these can be very fluid. You know, I could make 
ellipses out right in front of me and I'd still be happy with the order. So this is just where they landed today. If you ask me tomorrow, I might say something different, but I'm also not gonna talk too, too much because I did just upload that top eyeshadow palette video, so I do go into more depth. Number 16, I have the Butte Bean and Shred Cosmetics It's Frickin' Bats palette. This color story is amazing. This is so inspiring to me. I've had so much fun with this and the quality so good. 15. This is my favorite neutral palette of 2021 for sure. This is the Melt Cosmetics Brunette palette and it's funny because the Patrick Ta is probably better quality than this but I just love the tones of the mattes here. I find them so blendable and the shimmers I don't even care about. It's the mattes that I really really love. I find them so easy to use and buttery and they just look so blurred on the eye but the shimmers are cool too. Except for this one. This one's a little messy, but they're cool too. I just, I love this palette. It's my favorite neutral palette this year. I can't stop reaching for it. 14, I have the Pat McGrath Labs Voyeuristic Vixen Quad. I said this in my video that this didn't get the love it deserved because it came out with the blushes, but this is an absolutely stunning palette from Pat McGrath. I've actually found that I've reached for it a lot. <laughs> Believe it or not, for every day, the quality is just spectacular on this. It's a little bit boring, but I love the quality. It's so rich and beautiful. 13, I have the Charlotte Tilbury. <gasps> you know what I forgot to put in this video too was the other one to this. So <laughs> I knew I was gonna forget stuff, but this is the one I like. This is the Luxury Palette of Pearls. The other one, the Cosmic Palette, was in my least favorites video, and I forgot to put it in today's video, but that one was not good. <laughs> this one is awesome. This one made the top eyeshadow palette video. It gives the most beautiful, glowy, ethereal look to the eye. It's the true essence of Charlotte Tilbury and what the brand represents, so I'm so happy that she came out with this, and it just reminded me that you don't always need definition to create a beautiful eye look. At 12, we have the Dior Soft Cashmere Quint. Wow, I tried a lot of Dior this year, but this one is definitely my favorite Dior Quint that came out. It's just beautiful taupey neutrals, which has been my go-to color story this year for every day and the quality of this. Oh, so, so good. Highly recommend that one. There's a lot of Dior Quints, as you saw, that I recommend you stay away from, for, but this one, the Soft Cashmere, buy it. It's amazing. So the next one that we have, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, is the ABH Primrose Palette. This is one that I feel very comfortable to reach for every day. I really, really enjoy the quality of this. I think it's stunning. And something to keep in mind is that it is a bajillion times more beautiful in person than it is online. So if you haven't seen this in person, you'll be shocked. Number 10 is a Viseart palette. This is the Kashmiri palette. It's not the most exciting color story, but it's really exciting to me. I think Viseart did a phenomenal job with this palette. The quality is really great. I love that you have more of a neutral side here, and then you have more of a rosy, mauve kind of side here, which is really the kind of color story that I go for every day, so I love it. Number 9. This came out last year, technically, but my love for it carried well into 2021, so I'm just going to talk about the Fire Rose Quad from Charlotte Tilbury, which you can see broke, but this is the best Charlotte Tilbury quad I have ever tried, ever, period, and you can't get it anymore, and I'm mad, so I'm going to continue talking about it until she brings it back. So, these are kind of going to fit into 6th, 7th, and 8th place, but it doesn't really matter what order they go in because I love them equally and I mix them all together. So I'm giving them the 6th and 7th and 8th place, but there's no permanence to any of the places. So this is the Hummingbird palette, which was in collaboration with Fancy Face, or her name is Tina. Really beautiful, brighter colored. Then with Judy, this is the Red Dragon palette, which is for those of you who like more neutral shadows, but it's still very, very unique. You'll still get very different looking neutral eyes. And I will say this one's probably my favorite of the three. This is the Giant Wolves palette, which was in collaboration with Annette's Makeup Corner, just because I feel like if I were to curate a palette, it would look something like this. Maybe not quite so blue, but this top row here has my name written all over it. This is the best, best, best formula that Odin's eye has ever come out with. The shimmers are so textured and beautiful. They all have a multi-chrome in the palettes. The mattes are pigmented, very blendable. I've talked about these palettes a ton recently because they really are 
that good. I keep using them. I keep feeling so inspired by these palettes. They're great. So in fifth place is the Viseart Grande Pro 1X. I do have it tucked away in my makeup kit, so in its place, I'm just holding my old dingy one that I keep in my personal collection. But I actually use this dingy one, since it's for personal use now, all the time just to grab for certain colors that I need. But I use the 1X in my makeup kit, and I use it on about 95% of the looks that I create, even if I'm just using one eyeshadow palette. So, I mean, this palette probably wouldn't rank so high if I didn't use it in my bridal kit, but I do want to take that into consideration because it's my work. It's what I do. So, yeah, I love this one. Highly recommend it for pros. Four is the ABH Norvina Volume 5 palette. If you're a purple lover, you have to try this one out. I think the quality on this one is just fantastic and all of the colors make sense. The colors that aren't purple perfectly complement the purple colors. It's a great one. Three is, ooh, I don't know. See, this is where I'm like, I don't know which deserves to be in what place, but this is the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz Palette. I just love the quality on this one. The shades are so absolutely devastatingly beautiful. Like, so beautiful to look at. The way that she presents the palette, the packaging, everything is just A+. And I mean, does this deserve to be in third place I don't know but it's really really pretty and it's been in the forefront of my mind lately so that's where it ended up number two is the utopian dream palette from Pat McGrath labs it's not my favorite palette that Pat's ever come out with but these two shades right here are like my favorite colors that Pat McGrath has come out with if we cover this the bottom six shades aren't as exciting to me but it's these top four shades that I'm like oh my god I love this palette so much but nonetheless loved all the looks I've created with this palette it's stunning I love it so 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 much and Pat McGrath's formula is just so superior that no matter what the color story is it doesn't matter I love the quality so much that it's going to rank super duper high and then my number one favorite eyeshadow palette for this year. I think looking at it, it's not the prettiest eyeshadow palette, but in terms of how often I've used it, how comfortable I feel with it, how inspired I feel with it, it's just like a me palette. It is the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. It's the perfect sister to the Glam Palette, which again is one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes of all time. The quality is really beautiful. And especially this year, my love for purple really blossomed even more and became stronger because the industry was feeding me the purple palettes that I wanted. But this is just a great everyday kind of purple palette, a little bit more muted, great quality. I'm obsessed with this palette. It's, it's my favorite. That's number one. All right, you guys, there we did it. I ranked all 100 and something palettes for 2021. As you could see, there were some that I forgot and I remembered halfway through. It's hard to keep track, but I hope you guys found this entertaining nonetheless. As you know, it's very stressful for me to rank all of my babies, but I feel very accomplished, I will say that. So again, thank you so much for liking this video and being subscribed to my channel. If you type up my name and look up the name of an eyeshadow palette you're curious about, maybe you saw today something about it should show up if anything all of these palettes are in my monthly ranking videos where I go more into depth about the palettes I give you swatches as well as the look so those are very helpful resources to you as well so <sighs> all right guys I will see you in the next one have a good rest of your day